his holy name. Well, glory be to God. Well, it's offering time. Hallelujah. We're here to give unto the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, given the, the ministry, praise God, so he can take our, 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 our seeds that we sow in love into the kingdom and cause us to reap of love in the kingdom. Why? Because we give because we love God and love people. Hallelujah. So that's why I tithe and that's why I give. Praise his holy name. Man, we're just so thankful that Jesus makes a way for us to be able to be blessed financially so we can give more to his kingdom to bless all over the world and our community. Praise his holy name. Man, don't, don't forget that every fourth Sunday is Mission Sunday, and any month we have a fifth Sunday, it's Stretch Offering Sunday. So, man, just be praying for you know, to the Father and ask Him to give you money to give into those times. It's only four times a, a year we have stretch offering, and then every month we have missions. But just remember, you know, John chapter 15, verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and you shall receive it. So that's what I base 
my giving on. I ask him, you know, for extra money to send to me so that I can give extra into his kingdom. And I just believe that his word's true. And if I do what his word says, he'll do what his word says. Hallelujah. So don't be speaking things against you being able to give into his kingdom. If something arises and an offering happens and you can't give, say, well, praise God, Lord, I don't know what happened this time, but I'm just thankful that next time I'm going to have plenty enough money to give. And bind the devil from interfering with your, your money and your finances and command him to take his hands off of it because that's more your responsibility than God's because he's done gave me and you all the power to take care of that. So I bind the enemy from stopping the finances that belong to the people that will give into the kingdom and give to true Christian fellowship. I command you to take your hands off the money that belongs to our church and I thank you Lord the money's coming in to build our church and to buy a van for fellowships. Hallelujah, and for, for the teens and the other people to have it to drive so everybody can ride together. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, don't forget, you know, just write on your envelope your full address. Write on your envelope what what place you want the money to go into. And there's three things that ain't on here in that stretch offering. So anytime you put in the stretch offering, you just write stretch on here somewhere. And anytime you put into the, the new church or building, just write new church. And anytime you put into the van, just write van on there. And, and we'll, um, you know, when we get new ones, we'll have that added on probably. But we're just thanking the Lord for taking care of every situation, every circumstance in our church, always coming through, and he always shows out. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you right now. We praise you right now. We give you glory right now. We, we lift up our offerings to worship you from here, and we're thanking you that you're doing things above what we could even ask or think. And we give you all praise for meeting every need in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glory to God. It's Wednesday night, and we're getting into In Him Part 2. Started this series last week from the book Dad Hagen had. Praise God called in Him. It tells you in Scripture, if you look up the in Him Scriptures, you'll see who me and you are in Christ. So we have to keep confessing who we are in Christ. Amen? So we need to make our confession known and hold fast to that confession that what Christ said about us comes out of our mouth. Praise God. Well, we're going to find out what God's Word uh, says about us and then we're going to make our confession about who He is to us. Praise God. So I hope since last week you've been confessing you're a child of the living God, following Jesus and doing what He says every day, that He's your Lord and you obey Him. And, and every day you worship and magnify and praise Him through your life, living your life as a glorifying to His presence. Amen. Just glorifying His presence in your life. Hallelujah. You know, Dad Hagen, he said people often uh, study the Bible and, and ask him about how to study the Bible. And, you know, and he ha says he had many suggestions of how to study the Bible, but the one that, that he does above all others is as a Christian, as a believer, he believes you should read through the New Testament and you should read, you know, that's what we do. We read primarily the New Testament and then ever so often we put the Old Testament in there. And you got to believe that, that, that the ones that wrote the epistles that were there with Jesus, when they teach a doctrine, it comes straight from Jesus is what they're teaching. Praise God. I mean, John even said in First John that if they don't listen to us, then we shouldn't have nothing to do with them. So John and them walked with Jesus. They was there with Jesus. And any time in the Word, when you see the expressions in Him, in Christ, anything that has to do with Him, you know, and Dad Hagen found out there's about 140 uh, expressions. Most of them are in the epistles about in Christ. So if we're greeting people, we should greet them in Christ. Tell them about something Jesus said, praise God. You know, Paul said, he said, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's an expression of in Christ. We should be greeting people with Jesus, not with our opinions, what we think, what we're going through, but we should be greeting them with Christ. His words, the doctrine that came from the lips of the Messiah Himself, that story He told. Amen. 
<laughs> we got to find scriptures that, that will convey the message to us of who we are in Christ. You know, you got to find the in Him scriptures, in Christ scriptures, Jesus, all those that tell us what we are in Him. That what, and most of those things, when you read them, they've already happened. Man, you need to quit trying to get them to happen and just put faith in that they've already happened. Like we've already talked about healing for a couple of weeks, it's already happened in Christ. We're already the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus once you believe. So you have to confess that. You don't pray to get righteous after you get born again. You are made righteous. So it's already done a finished work. So you have to just remind yourself who you are in Christ. Remind the devil who you are in Christ. Any demonic forces, any darkness, remind them who you are in Christ. Because <clears throat> let me tell you, they're scared of Christ. He made an open show of, of their Lord to them. Satan is their Lord. He made an open show of Him publicly and stripped Him of all weapons. So all me and you have to do is look in the Scriptures, find out what it says about us, walk in that. Amen? And the devils have to run. <clears throat> and I ain't talking about just reading it one time and what case arise, arise, that's what it says. No, you need to meditate on who you are in Christ and what He's done for you. <clears throat> Excuse me, and begin to confess it out of your mouth that Jesus has done this already. That He's done this already in your life, and that you're going to follow Him, and you believe that your faith confessions will create realities in your life. If God said uh, through the Apostle Paul in, in Philippians, but my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus then you just need to make that your faith and not just Paul's faith and believe that. And then find out what they did for Paul to make that declaration in their life and they had to believe it. And it's because they gave into the ministry. They took care of him. And when you take care of people, man, that's over you in the ministry, God blesses you. Like this month, this past appreciation month, man, bless your pastor. God will take care of you. I bless my pastor, and I know God is taking care of me because of it. Me and Yvette have always been people that blessed our pastor no matter what church we were in. We blessed our pastor. We done it all year. We didn't just wait, but we did extra when it was time to do it. You know, at that time, but we believed in blessing them all the time. Praise God, and and that that's just what we believe in. We we believe there's a blessing hooked up to that of blessing people over you in the Lord, and we, and we we just gonna believe it. and we watch God. He's come through for us in every situation that we ever face. He's always come through. He always will. Uh, the only time it, that it appeared that he didn't come through was when it was our fault. It ain't never God's fault. If something's going on in your life, you need to find out what's causing that. Get before Him and find out what you've done to allow it to get in because He didn't do nothing to allow it to come in. He's already made His declaration concerning your, your and my healing. He's already made His declaration concerning mine and your financial situation. He's already made His declaration about heaven and hell. Me and you have to line up with what He said and do what He said for it to happen in our life and for people to see it on display in our life showing off our God. Amen. So you've got to get in there and find out what it says because as far as... God's concerned, everything that He's put in the Bible that's in Christ, in Him, it's already done. It's, it's ours. Everything is ours. Everything in the Bible that says it's ours, guess what? It's, it's not just yours because it's yours legally. You can legally claim what belongs to you according to the Word. Your body gets sick, a, d a disease, your body gets pain and hurting. You have a legal right to declare, no, by His stripes I'm healed. I was already healed 2,000 years ago. Now body line up with the Word. And then you have a right legally to confess Psalms 91 over your life through Jesus because you can bring that to, to the cross. You know, that He protects me. I've put my love upon Him. Therefore, I believe that no accident shall befall me. Neither any plague will come nigh my dwelling. No sickness, disease. you got to believe that and confess that. A lot of people, they want to confess and, and make things happen and after stuff happens to them. They want to confess they don't have you know th diabetes after they get it. Confess they don't have cancer after they get it. Confess they're healthy, healed, and whole after they get COVID-19. You need to be confessing that all the time according to the Word. You know, 
I, I believe this is something that the devil started to scare people. You can look over the past year how he shut the mouth of, uh, of the church as far as the body of Christ. Man, if you think about it. you got all these people say they're Christians. If all these hundreds of millions of people in the United States would have stood up and said, no, you're not shutting us down. We're doing what Jesus said. Man, we would have seen a difference in this situation. And that uh, virus would have run back to hell, I believe, where it came from. But it's still lingering around because people are playing with it instead of getting before God and worshiping Him and asking Him to, uh, to to protect you and asking Him and confessing out of your mouth and believing and making it a reality that no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. you got to believe that and do what it says. And people have asked me, are you getting the... the uh, the vaccine, I said, no, first of all, it ain't a vaccine, it's just a shot that uh, increases your immune system, is what they're telling people. Well, I can do that with vitamin C, but I can do it more worshiping the master. Man, if you want to get rid of that in your life, COVID-19, anything, I'm telling you, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, if we would just learn to get on our knees and worship Jesus, things would change. You need a job, worship the Master. You need a car, worship Jesus. You need things at your house, worship Jesus. Hallelujah. He loves and enjoys for us to worship Him because He created us to, with a free will to worship Him freely. Hallelujah. So find out in the Scripture what belongs to you and then believe that and worship Him uh, because of what He's saying. Amen? <laughs> we know from God's viewpoint, you know that once he, you know, once you get saved from his viewpoint, you already all old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. He's not looking at you at what you used to be. He's looking at you at what you are now. From his viewpoint, you are a Christian. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, he saved Jesus. When Jesus raised from the dead, he we we actually uh, in in the spirit he saved us at the cross. Amen. The only thing is that when you accept salvation, then it comes to reality in your life. But according to him, two thousand years ago, it became a reality to God when he watched his son die on the cross. It became a reality to him that mankind, all of mankind, could be saved by believing what he did and accepting what he did at the cross. Amen. But it takes me and you to accept it and believe it. How do we do that? By confessing with our mouth that Jesus is our Lord, believing our heart God raised Him from the dead. Then you take that confession of faith, that profession of faith, and you confess it and profess it to people and tell them, Jesus took my sin away at the cross. I've accepted that. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm born again. I'm a child of the living God. Not going to be, I am right now. I'm not going to uh, one day be a, be a child of God. I am a child of God. You need to let people know and tell them Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood. By His own blood He entered into once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Man, he, it's already done. He has obtained eternal redemption for us. Already done at the cross. And when He uh, entered into the, into the holy place with His blood and God accepted it, it was already done. Jesus don't never have to die again. He don't never have to shed His blood again like in the Old Testament when they had to do it once a year. Jesus did it once and for all. His blood is powerful. Glory to God. He's already done it. He ain't going to do it again. The provision's already been made for me and you for salvation. And Romans 10.10 10 tells me and you how to obtain salvation. Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation. And we got to understand when that mouth is made, uh, yet confession out of your mouth is made unto salvation. Salvation is not one fold, two fold, but it's three fold. When you make that salvation confession, you're believing Jesus is Lord, God raised him from the dead. You're escaping the second death, which is an eternal death in hell, and then be put in the lake of fire. You're also escaping lack on this earth. He broke the back of lack. You're also escaping sickness and disease when you confess out of your mouth that Jesus is your Savior. He's your Lord. He's your healer. He's your banker. Then you escape uh, sickness, disease in your body. Your body has a line up with the Word and your finances have to line up with the kingdom principles. And you ain't got to worry about going to hell when you confess out of your mouth and believe that what Jesus said is true and you walk in what He said about you. 
It's always with your heart that you believe. That's why Jesus said He's got to have your heart. That's why He told us in the Word, in, the, in, in Luke I believe it is, where their heart is not for me. Their lips are talking about me, but their heart is far from me. A lot of people, you know, try to talk about Jesus and try to say this about Him, but there's no spirit behind it. But you know why? They're not following Him. They're not obeying Him. There's a lot of fake uh, Facebook Christians that ain't really Christians. I mean, my goodness, they don't even go to church. Man, when you're a church, you're going to want to go to Christ, to, to church. When you're a Christian, you're going to want to go to church to spend time with your brothers and sisters. John said a genuine love for your brothers and sisters coming to you when you accept Jesus. There's two things that happen. One, there's a different voice you hear and you should listen to it and obey it. That's Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Father talking to you. And there's a genuine love put in you for the brethren. Well, if that happens to you, you're going to want to be at church to spend time with your brothers and sisters. How can you say you're a Christian and you don't even want to go to the house of the living God? You say, well, I want to, but I, I just can't deny my flesh and uh, get up in the morning. I can't, you know, I don't have enough money to do this. I don't have enough th to do that. I, I have to watch over everything. Why don't you get on your knees and worship Him? Ask Him to wake you up on Sunday morning to get to church and ask Him to provide for you to get to church because He's already provided for you through Christ by everything that's in heaven. So you got no excuses. Get yourself up and get to church and obey Jesus if you say you're a Christian. But there's a lot of Facebook Christians, they just want to speak about a little bit of the Word they know when they really don't know it because you don't know any Word unless you live in it. Hallelujah. You, if any word that you say you know, it's got to be a word that you're living. You can't be mad and upset with people and then tell me you love Jesus because He says you don't. And then He says He can't love you when you're mad and upset and tore up at people. Don't tell me you're mad. At, I mean, people that don't even like you, you you mad and upset with them. Why? Jesus said to love them. And you ain't obeying Him and saying you're okay with Him. No, you're not okay with Jesus if you don't obey Him. You got to obey him. Get in this Bible and find out what it says about him, and then do what it says. When it, when you find out it says something about you in in this word that this is who you are in him, then you need to confess that and believe that until that happens in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you believe something down in your heart and confess it out of your fight, out of, believe it in your heart and you confess it out of your mouth. Guess what? It becomes real to you. It becomes real when faith drops down inside of you and faith's confessions become and create realities because you believed in your heart and you're confessing out of your mouth what the Lord has said about you. Amen. You got to you got to get on when things ain't doing right, you, you say, I ain't got a job, I need a job, get on your face, get on your knees and worship the master, and a job will come. You get quotes about something, whether it's insurance, house payments, car payments, and it's too high, and they're trying to uh, get you to do a, a high outrageous interest rate, get on your knees and worship Jesus. He can change all that around. Praise God. It's been proven that He can do what we believe Him to do. The problem is people just don't believe what His Word says. They want to believe what's going on. No, I'm healed according to His Word. I, I got more than enough money according to His Word to give to every good work. And you got to believe that and rely on it. Man, I love people that hate me. I forgive everybody. And you got to confess out of your mouth, I love them, I forgive them and forget it. I'm not going to hold that against that restaurant. So that waitress, she might have been having a bad day. I'm not going to hold that against her and talk about her and tell people, man, if you go to this restaurant, don't use this waitress. But if you go to the same restaurant and you use a waitress two or three times, and they just you just see they ain't worth a flip when it comes to waitressing, when you go back, just ask for another waitress. Don't let that one keep tearing you up unless the Lord tells you to keep using that one. Go get one that's going to be there and serve you and do what they're supposed to. Waitress means to serve. Amen. They're supposed to serve you. Praise God. But don't go around telling people how bad they are and all you have is one or two experiences with them. They might have had a bad day or two. Have you ever had one? Did Jesus forgive you? Then you should forgive them and forget it and move on and do what He tells you to do. Praise God. You should use the, the Scriptures that says in Christ and in whom and in Him. It may not seem like you really have what that Scripture says about you, but if you will begin confessing out of your mouth and believe in your heart because 
God's Word says it and believe what God's Word says about you in your heart, that that belongs to me, that's mine, you'll see that become a reality in your life because you're walking according to His Word, confessing what He's already done. You say, this is what I have, and I will walk in it, and it will become a reality to you. <clears throat> you know why a lot of people ain't at church? Because they confess out of their mouth, man, I just can't get up and be there. They confess out of their mouth things that keep them from there. Yeah, well, our family gets together on Sunday. We'll change it to another day. It's more important for you to go to heaven. I ain't letting my family, uh, uh, nothing keep me from obeying Him and doing what He says. I don't care what they say. They can either come with me or they can wait there till we get back. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But I'm going to let them see that what they want to do is more important than me obeying the Master. See, that's the problem in your family. When you're, you raise your kids and they see that you staying home or you doing what you want to or they got a party this week so we're going to miss church. <clears throat> and they see that that stuff is more important to you than God then it puts a weak faith inside of them. And they think, well, if you can do it, they can do it. And then they see you fussing and fighting at home and on your way to church and <clears throat> instead of just saying, man, I love you, I forgive you and forget it. We're going to walk in peace. We're going to walk in joy. You need to say that. Some of you need to go to your children that you fought in front of for years and tell them you're sorry for the way you acted in front of them and then called yourself a Christian and acted a different way at church. No, go to them and tell them you're sorry and the Lord's convicting you and you're going to change and become more and more like Jesus. Hallelujah. Just let them see Him in you. Let them see that He's really real in your life. That you believe that in Him you will live and move and have your being. It's all in Him. You believe that You've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer you that live, but Christ liveth in you. Amen. It's Christ living in you. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And you've got to let them know, man, I'm following Jesus now. You might have thought you were then, but if you was fussing and fighting all the time, cussing, ranting and raving, not faithful to God and doing what He told you to do, not faithful in loving your enemies, not faithful in going to church, not faithful in tithing and giving, not faithful in reading your Bible, worshiping Him, being submitted to authority, whether it was in church or at work, and, and you're not honoring people that, that, that He's told you to honor. You honor people that have especially taught you in the Lord. You honor people that have gave you jobs and you honor bosses that are there for you that, that, that rule over you with righteousness and peace and justice. Man, honor them. Thank God for them. Man, just I thank you, Father God, for, 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 for just taking care of me and giving me a job where my boss is a Christian. Man, honor them. Praise God. You say, well, my boss ain't a Christian. Oh, I honor you, God, that you gave me a job, and I thank you that you're using this wicked person over me, but you're going to use them to bless me because you can take the heart of the king and move it which way you want, so surely you can take the heart of my boss and move it towards me. Now, you need to act right and, and, and be under authority to that boss. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, and quit talking about them and tearing them down. Hallelujah. Why do you think that you're going to be blessed at a job that you keep talking negative about and tearing them down? No, you're supposed to be working as unto the Lord. Amen. So go to work and work as unto the Lord. Don't work as unto what you want to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all know that everything that Jesus has said about me and you, the Father said about me and you, the Holy Ghost has showed us in the Word and revealed Scriptures to us. According to them, it's already happened in the spiritual realm. It's already, uh, it's already done. It's manifest in the spiritual realm. We have to get it out of the spiritual realm into this natural realm so people can see who we are as the king's kids. Hallelujah. The problem with us is we want it to become real in the physical realm before we'll believe it. Well, that's why you ain't got a lot when it comes to godly things because you think you uh, have to see it before uh, it's real. No, it's real if he said it. It's already real in the spiritual realm. You just got to bring it and manifest it into this realm. Hallelujah. How do you do that? You do it according to what the Word says. Hallelujah. When it says something, when the Scripture says something, you need to go in your Bible. You know, if you've got a Bible you can't write in, just throw it away. Or if you've got your phone, you can highlight it and everything. Man, and you can write notes. If you know how to use that phone, you can do everything on that phone. As long as you use it and you keep going back and looking at it and seeing what you put on there and uh, underline and highlight it and all that. And, and, and you can uh, uh, write it down. Man, when you write Scriptures down, it helps you really to remember 
So you can underline them, highlight them, write them down. Then you, what do you got to do? You got to meditate on that. You know, I used to, when, when I first started in the faith, I used to have scriptures on my mirrors up till probably five years ago, maybe. Might need to put some more up there if the Holy Ghost leads me. But you write them down. You got them up there on them <clears throat> index cards to your mirror, and you can quote them when you go in there. When you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you can quote the Word as you look at yourself. Amen. You meditate on it. You make a confession of it, of what it says about you. You know, once you, you write it down, you meditate on it, you confess out of your mouth, and, and then you begin to say it with your mouth. You, you make a confession of it. In other words, man, all my needs are met according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Therefore, I don't have to worry about money. Praise God. He's already took care of everything I need. I don't have to worry about food. I don't have to worry about clothes. I don't have to worry about a place to live. Man, why? He's already supplied everything I have need of in his, according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. According to Matthew 6.33, I ain't got to worry about no clothes or nowhere to live. I don't have to worry about any of that. What to eat? Why? Because I seek ye first the kingdom of God. God, his rule and his way of doing things and because of that all these things will just be added unto me you got to find out what the scripture says quit going after stuff that's already yours and go after it by the confession of your mouth you ain't got to pray about it no you get, find when you find that it's already answered in the word you just got to confess it out of your mouth meditate on it and make a confession and then speak it with your mouth and believe God's going to take care of it and and that faith that you're speaking out of your mouth by believing in your heart uh, what the Word says, confessing it out of your mouth, meditating on it, regurgitating it over and over in your spirit till it becomes real to you, and then saying it out of your mouth, then those faith confessions and professions that you're making out of your mouth because you're walking according to the Word, guess what? They will become a reality in your life. Praise God. Quit letting the devil beat you up with things that he, uh, he's got going on uh, in your past or something that happened long ago. After you got saved, all that was forgiven. Now, if he tells you to go to somebody and ask him to forget it, go to him and tell him. But if he don't, don't let the devil keep beating you up. Let the Holy Ghost lead you every day and show you every day what you need to do in Christ and how you need to follow Christ and how you what you need to believe and what you need to confess and what you need to get in there and find out what the Word says about you. The great confession, y'all, is Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth. So that's, this is the greatest confession you can make. Why? Because this is what gets you into the kingdom of God. By believing this, this, these scriptures here and doing what they say is. So this is the greatest confession. If, if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, then what will happen? Thou shalt be saved. Why? For with the heart my man, the man believeth, or, or woman believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Well, how do you do that? Then you, you take them scriptures right there, and you can say, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He was raised from the dead for my justification. I confess Him as my Lord and my Savior. See, coming out of your mouth, you got to believe in your heart. And then you confess, Jesus is my Lord. Tell people, Jesus is my Lord. I, what does that mean? I do what He says. He's dominating my life. He is guiding me. He is leading me. And how does He do all that? He does all that through the Spirit. Because He said the Spirit's coming. When He leaves, the Spirit will come. And He'll lead you, guide you, protect you. He'll show you things to come. See, the Holy Ghost is the God of this age right now. Hallelujah. God the Father was, He was God to, to people in the Old Testament. He was their God. Then, and Jesus and Holy, all of them is God. But then Jesus came and He was God at that time for, for that time He was here on the earth. But He left, went back to heaven. Him and God's God right now in the heaven. And the Holy Ghost is God right now to us on the earth. I know the devil, the, he, He's the God of this earth, but He's the little G. The big G God right now is the Holy Ghost to the church and those that believe and confess out of their mouth that Jesus is their Lord. And I believe He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's protecting me. He's showing me how to live every day in life. He's showing me what to do. He's showing me everything I need to do. And He's showing me what I need to confess and believe. This first confession right here we must make is the confession that Jesus is my Lord. 
Because being born again and becoming a child of God, that's where it starts. If you ain't done that, you all this other stuff ain't even going to work for you. Because the key is believing that. And then the, that key of getting born again unlocks all of God's provisions and all of God's promises to me and you. You can't stand on the promises of God and believe for the provision that He's made for you in Christ and you're not even born again a Christian. You can't get filled with the Holy Ghost and the devil's your daddy. You, you can't do that. You'd blow up. The Holy Ghost is holy. <laughs> See, that confession of Jesus is my Lord and He's my Savior and He's watching over me and He leads me and guides me. That transfers your Lordship from the devil to Jesus. The devil was your lordship. He told you what to do every day. But when you believe in Jesus, confess He's your Lord, believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead, and, and you make a transfer into the kingdom of God, and you're translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, when that happens in your life, then you have the right and the ability to, to, to get a cor uh, the Word and unlock the keys to all this that's locked up in the Word that belongs to me and you. The mysteries of, of Christ, the mysteries that the Holy Ghost will reveal to you in the provision and the promises of God that are mine and yours because of our confession and our lordship have changed. And it, that divide, by lordship changing, that tells you what your position is in Christ. I got this little book when I first got saved. It said, get in position. Uh, get in position. So you had to get in, and it was a, you know, it related to me because it was a football play. When you, when you play in football, if you're uh, the wide receiver and you go back in the huddle and they call a play and they tell you to go 10 yards and, and cut inside and, and they're going to hit you with the pass and you go 20 yards and cut outside, guess what? You wasn't in the position that, that they called the play for, so you ain't going to catch the ball. Well, Jesus wants to put us in the position by our confession that we can receive everything that pertains to us uh, from the promises of what God has said. So when I change my lordship to, uh, under Jesus, it immediately puts me under the care, under the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He becomes my shepherd. And according to Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord Jesus is my shepherd, and I shall not want, I do not want, I have all I want. In Christ. It's in Christ. We, we have confessed Him as Lord, but we have to take it a step further. And now, He is my Father. God is my Father. Jesus is my Shepherd. They're watching over me. They're taking care of me. They're doing exactly what I believed them for. John 10, 14 said He's the Good Shepherd. you got to wake up in the morning with these Scriptures confessing, the Lord is my Shepherd. He's a Good Shepherd. He watches over me. He takes care of me. I do not want for money. I do not want it all. I don't want for healing. I don't want for anything. Why? The Lord is my Shepherd. Amen. you got to do... You got to, If you need healing in your body, quit going after it and go after Him. And confess out of your mouth who He is. I shall not want. If you need money, quit going after that money and believe that He's sending it to you and the money's on the way. Hallelujah. That's why you got to wake up saying the Lord is my shepherd. I do not want. I don't want for money. I don't want for healing. I don't want for anything. I already have it. It's in Christ Jesus. And I worship you, Jesus. Man, praise God. Well, hallelujah. Well, we're going to stop right there. We'll take it up again next week. Praise God with part three. Man, I'm just so happy to be a Christian and know who I am in Christ. And I'm, I'm learning every day more and more about who, who He is and, and the things that I have in Him and, and the things I can believe for. And I get in His Word and I just believe that what He said about me is going to happen. Amen. And we have to make our faith become reality. How do you do that? Find out what it says. Meditate on it. Believe it. Get it. Get that confession of what the Word says and then let that come out of your mouth as a confession. And your confession, faith confessions, will create the reality in your life. Hey, man, well, we love you. Praise God, man. We hope to see you Sunday in the house of the living God. Remember, we start at 10 a.m. right now. And uh, we're just so thankful for Jesus and everything He's done. Hope to see you there. Hope He's your Lord and hope you obey Him and do what He says. If He's your Lord, I mean, if Jesus is really your Lord, then we will see you Sunday at church at 10 a.m. If you say True Christian Fellowship, it's your church and I'm your pastor. I love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. 
Well, we're so thankful. Man, it is altar call time. Praise God. So if you're here today, you know, if you listen to the message today, and uh, we're just so thankful that you joined in with us today. We're, and if you need to give your whole life to Jesus right now, we want you to, 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 to repeat after me. Say, Father, I come to you today. I believe your word. I've been convicted today of sin in my life. Lord, I thank you for rescuing me from my sins. I thank you for shedding your blood and presenting an offering to the Father that took away all my sin. Now, Father, I believe right now in Jesus. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. Father, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And according to your word right now, I'm born again. Now, Father, I've believed in Him. I'm relying on clinging to and trusting in Him. Now, Father, make me a disciple. Show me Jesus' doctrine. And let someone put me under someone that will teach me how to follow His doctrine and live in accordance with it. If you don't have a church home, Make your church home true Christian fellowship and come and let Pastor Robert be over you in the Lord. And I'll teach you how to follow Jesus through the teachings of Christ. Amen. Now, if you've uh, given your whole life to Jesus, man, just send me a, a uh, if you got my phone number, send me a text. If you don't, then send me an email. Just, just, just please take the time and send me an email at GodIsSlapAwesome at BellSouth.net. So I can give a praise report on the air of what God's did in your life. Amen. Hey, and that goes for all y'all watching that's in the church and God's doing things for you. I've been telling you now to send me praise reports to my email address or text me. And if you've got one and ain't done it, then people are missing out on hearing your report because the Bible says make your deeds known among the people. So if he's done anything for you, you need to let me know through email. Or through a text so I can do it on the next service and say, man, we just want to praise God for God doing this in so-and-so's life. Amen? Man, we're so thankful. And Lord, right now we're, we're believing that your word says we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We can send your word and people can get healed. So right now if there's any problem in your body, the doctors gave you a bad report, no matter what it is, Right now, I ask you to put your hand on that. I'm going to stretch forth my hand. I'm believing right now in Jesus' name. The anointing is flowing through this, coming into you wherever your hand is, and we're driving out that demonic force that's trying to attack itself to your body, and you're going to walk totally healthy, healed, and whole. You're a healed woman in a healthy body. You're a healed man in a healthy body. Now just receive that and receive it with thanksgiving and praise God that you've been delivered from whatever that circumstance is. Amen? And just let him know how thankful you are that you're walking in victory in Jesus. Amen. Man, we're just so thankful for y'all. We can't wait to, to, to see y'all again. And uh, man, We love y'all so much. And uh, uh, we, we praise God for you. We praise God for you. We're so thankful for you. Hallelujah. And don't forget... If you're doing your offering by mail, don't forget to send it. If you're doing it by the church, drop it off, put it in the slot. And we're so thankful for y'all, your faithfulness. And we praise God for you. And we thank God for you. Amen. And we thank God for more coming. In Jesus' name, amen.